Hi, welcome to the small shed. This week I'm looking at how I put the doors and windows into the shed and that's coming up next. Now it may not seem that important that, uh, or difficult to put windows or doors into a shed but the fact remains that the majority of the problems you get with any sort of water ingress are around joints and or things that you knock holes in the structure through. So wherever you've put a door or a window you're likely to be having problems with getting water in at some point um, and this has been made slightly more complicated by the fact that the windows that I bought were about three or four inches deeper than the actual side of the shed. Um, so I could have either had them protruding inwards which would reduce the size of the shed internally or I could have them protruding outwards and that was the route I chose to go but that has given us in itself that's given some sort of problems with having to weatherproof all that. So we'll just start with the windows, have a look at them, see what I've got, what I'm using and how I've sealed them all in. And then we'll move on to the doors because there's a little bit of alteration that was carried out on doors and for the store area I ended up making a new one myself. So this is one of the windows I ended up buying. I bought three of them, they were £75 a piece which may sound a lot but if you start looking around for windows um, new or second hand you start to find that uh, 50 or 60 pounds per window isn't that much of a problem for, for spending on them uh, and there isn't much alternative they're not that easy to make yourself. These um, are an aluminium window that's powder coated it opens there's a an opening vent on one, uh, one of the three which drops down at the top and gives me a ventilator out to the outside air which is useful. There's a, a catch on them which just has a small turn so that I can open them fully so that if ever I want to put stuff through the shed and work on it I can it will allow me to get a longer length through the wall if I ever had to. Um, and then that comes in the timber subframe which is about three inches thick. Uh, they're made by the same people that do the Velux roof lights. They've got a lot of rubber weather stripping around the edges um, and they form a very nice airtight seal. So I'm happy with them, double glazed, um, I've put some blinds in which I'll mention in a later video but that's a, more of a security thing than anything. Um, but they've been the ideal solution as far as the shed's concerned, they're very well insulated um, and they're very well weatherproof in themselves. The only issue obviously is keeping the water from getting in around the edges. Um, there's a timber I've just put round just to cover the joint between the, uh, the timber and the actual plaster work on the wall but other than that most of the weather stripping is, is inside where you can't see it effectively. Um, I've put a, a damp proof course around the outside um, and I've then sealed them in with foam that you squirt in and it fills up all the voids. Uh, I'll just have a quick look at the outside because you can then see how I've got around the problem of the depth of the window fitting into the shed itself.
So going back to the model that I used earlier of the shed, this gives you a rough idea of what was going on. Um, I made a framework that was as deep as the windows so that the finished window would end up flush in that opening, protruding as I say about an inch and a half, two inches out in front of the shed. And that was secured to studs all the way around. And the problem with that is, of course, that if you don't do anything else, you've got more or less a clear path through the side for water to get straight in, and it seeps straight through and comes out on the inside. So what I've done is I lined that inner panel with um, a flash band which is effectively a self-adhesive sticky bitumen uh, right and a strip that I put all the way down the edges and wherever there's a, a joint or a lap you are, or obviously you take the top one over the bottom one so that any water that hits it will go down rather than inside and that goes down behind the cladding um, but again it's sealed and then the building paper is put on top of it so that any water that gets in is not really going to get through anywhere it can't get past any of that on the top where it's exposed because the cladding doesn't cover the whole of that stick out bit I put the flash band right the way across wrapped it over the top and again sealed all the joints round that was again once that was done the cladding was all bedded in mastic around it as well and the cladding was then sealed on the outside with mastic so I don't think there's any chance of water getting in at all through that now. Um, the bottom sill was set at an angle so that where the windows were because they're flush any water will drip down them but if it does if it drips onto that ledge it won't flow back inside the shed because it's pointing down forwards it'll drip off like a normal sill and just drop down the outside of the cladding so I think the windows have been suitably well or at least the subframe has been suitably well sealed that nothing's going to get past that now the subframe was of necessity slightly small uh, slightly bigger than the fr the windows that were going in just in order to get them in and we're probably talking about two or three millimeters all the way around the edge and so once they were put in um, there is a a small recess on the back of the windows and I then just squirted the canned foam in from the inside and that's basically run right the way through the whole of the thickness of the frame um, from the inside to the outside so that will give a first line of defence and then on the front edge where the window frame meets the subframe again I've run a bead of mastic around that as well and that's so far touch wood been perfectly uh, weather resistant in some pretty filthy weather so I'm happy that the, the windows in the shed are not going to leak at all and they're providing what I wanted which is a, a nice insulated weatherproof finish now when it comes to the door frames I put the middle frame, middle panel of the wall um, on the opposite side to the door was made exactly the same size as the door frame at I think it was 950 millimeters so there isn't actually a panel where the door is it's actually the door frame that forms the panel um, I put the threaded inserts into the stud drilled holes in the door frame and it's bolted through that way before I did that I put on two strips of self-adhesive um, foam rubber which I've used quite a bit to seal joints and then that sat against the stud like that just level with the cladding at the front 
So there's immediately then a seal of some sort between the weather to stop anything getting through. That was then again bedded in mastic and another strip put on top to cover that joint and there is then a mastic run down the back either side of that. So again there's just no way water is going to get in through there and the frame itself is obviously rebated and it's got weather stripping in it to stop any problems there. So really at pretty much every position you, I could I, I could I put some sort of a barrier to water getting into the shed um, and in some cases two and three deep so that there shouldn't be any real issues over the next ten years um, that, that this is going to be being used. So that's how the weather stripping was done. Just have a look now at the doors themselves uh, as the two doors that I've got as to how they were produced. So that's the external door. As you can see it's only about 1750 high. Um, now I could have cut some off the top and some off the bottom but rather than weaken the door what I did was to take out that complete bottom rail and then cut everything short here and here. Lift that up and re-glued it back together again and that's provided a reasonable solution to the problem. Now the store door I had to make up because it was a completely odd size so I just uh, got a bit of scrap timber and made up a frame bought some reasonably decent tongue and groove cladding and put on the front and uh, fitted it and then gave it a, a coat of the green preservative the same as the rest of the shed and then uh, hung that and that's providing a, a reasonably secure place to put all the tools as well. So that's effectively dealt with the structure of the shed, its foundation, walls and roof and the windows and doors. Next week I just want to have a quick look at the finishings inside, what I've used on the walls the alternatives you could go for on that and how I've dealt with the electrics and I'll hope to see you then. Bye!